guys, today I am going to be telling you which three Victorian books I think you should definitely read. Now, whether you're a dark gothic soul like me, or a simple, normal person, not that there's anything simple about being normal, please don't take this the wrong way, you might have heard or even read something from the Victorian era. In my personal opinion, the books from that era are one of the best ever written. Anyway, they're the, one of the best books, in my opinion, ever written, and today I'm going to be telling you about three of my favourite, uh, which you've probably heard of anyway, which I think everyone should read. Number one, Frankenstein. Now, you probably know this uh, book as the, one of the first and best horror books ever, uh, but there is so much more to this book. In my opinion, it's one of the saddest stories I have ever written. I have never cried while reading a book this much as while reading Frankenstein. It's, it tells a story of a scientist, and not like most of you might think a mad one, at least in my opinion it's not very mad, at least not in the beginning, who um, after his mother's death uh, decides to build a human being and bring him back to life and since he's a medicine student or a chemistry, biology, physics student, uh, he has the option of doing that. Uh, this goes terribly wrong but not because the creature itself is, sad, uh, is bad but because the creature itself is ugly and actually everything that happens throughout the book is Victor Frankenstein's fault, in my opinion at least. Uh, you see, the creature isn't bad. I mean, yeah, he end up, ends up killing a couple of people, but only because no one taught him that, first of all, he can't, and second of all, the very moment he was born, Frankenstein abandoned him, not because he was bad, or not because he was cool, but because he was ugly. He abandoned the thing he created because the thing was ugly, and that is just, that is evil, okay? That is evil. So Frankenstein's monster is a beautiful, sad character who just wants to be loved, and just wants to have another being with him that will understand him and be there for him, unlike Frankenstein. And Frankenstein says no, because he's a shit. Anyway, uh, this story is very beautiful and very sad. I think it's definitely more sad and melancholic than horrorish. Um, we see the story of Fra both Frankenstein and the monsters. They go through life together in a way only, antagonistically, and it's just so beautiful. And you should totally read it because uh, maybe I think that a lot of people find this thing a horrorish-like thing and uh, don't really know what the story is really about. And I think that they should read it just to find out because it's so beautiful and so sad and so mesmerizing. Up to the next book. <sighs> Alice Through the Looking Glass. Now, Alice Through the Looking Glass is the second part of uh, Jesus Cat... I gotta get my cat. Alice Through the Looking Glass is the second part of Alice in Wonderland, written by Lewis Carroll. And uh, this is... Uh, the continuation of Alice's uh, adventures, only this time instead of falling asleep and going to Wonderland, she uh, goes through the looking glass, probably asleep as well, but my point is that she goes the looking glass, she doesn't fall down a rabbit hole. For those of you who don't know, her looking glass used to be a mirror, I mean that's what they used to call a mirror. Now I have done massive, and I mean massive, research on this book because when I was in, uh, well, in primary school, I think, I was fascinated by it and by the real character Alice Little because the Alice from this book is a real historical person. She was a photographic model and that means that she was a model that posed for photographs just when they were coming out for the first time. Uh, there's a theory a very, very possible theory uh, that most scientists think is, think is true, although some people disagree with it, that Lewis Carroll was indeed a pedophile. And uh, the reason for this is uh, Lewis Carroll, or otherwise known as uh, Charles Dodgson, used to be a very good friend to the little family. Uh, he used to take Alice and her siblings out on play dates say so and other stuff and uh, after some time he just started taking Alice on the road trips or boat trips or whatever I mean boat trips more than road trips but you get the point and um, while on those trips uh, he told her stories and that's how both of these books came to be those are the stories that uh, he told Alice Little who was six or seven about that time and 
After some time of him taking Alice out for play dates, uh, the family just kind of stopped talking to him. They shunned him away. They told him to never come back. So dramatic. And never to talk to their daughter again. Now, it is not known why, because the only uh, place where we could find out is his diary, but the, uh, the pages from this period are missing, so we don't know why. But uh, it is very probable that he was simply a pedophile since he was uh, a drug addict. And a drug addict, that doesn't mean he took cocaine, it means he was addicted to medicine. So he could have been a pedophile. I mean, I, as I mentioned, it's not a theory that is 100% true, but there's a 90% chance that it is true. And I personally agree with this theory because I think it's very possible. And um, when you read this with an open mind and uh, reading the... Alice Little biography first and Charles Dodgson's biography first, you will notice in this book a lot of very weird things uh, that, you know, uh, wouldn't appear if some of those facts that I have just mentioned weren't true. Although, as I mentioned, this isn't, this isn't a fact that was proved, so it might not be true, although it probably is in my opinion. The book is definitely worth the read. It's much better than the first part in my opinion and it's very interesting and you can really get deep into the metaphorical thing and it is very very nice pictures like this for instance. It's very cute and very cool to read. The, now the last position for today is you guessed Pride and Prejudice. Now I know this isn't something you probably thought I'd be reading because this is a romance. Very very at romance. But this book is just adorable. Um, I like Victorian romances, although not all of them. Some of them are just so boring and monothematic. But I adore Jane Austen. She's like the goddess of romances. I generally hate romances of all sorts, except for the Victorian ones. But this is just so amazing because it's not just a romance. It First of all, it really shows how the aristocracy used to live and how it all functioned. And secondly, it's just written in such a playful and funny way. It's so hilarious uh, that I think it's definitely worth the read. It obviously tells the story of every single character, feminine character in every single Victorian romance. That is, a woman should get married. This woman's name is Lizzie. But uh, Lizzie is a kind of a feminist, for her times at least. And Lizzie will not get married. At least not to whom they are telling her to get married. Mm -mm -mm. She is badass and she is cool and we like her. I mean, I like her. <laughs> of course, she, uh, spoiler alert, ends up marrying that guy who she hates the most because pff, why not? But this is just written in such a funny way and it's such a page turner and I think you should definitely read it, especially uh, since you should probably read it for at least one Victorian romance in your lifetime and I suggest that it be this one because most of them suck anyway and this one is actually good. <laughs> okay, anyway guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and subscribe to my dear face and like and comment and I hope to see you soon. I have missed you, thou. Goodbye.